welcome to 30 Flirty and Nerdy. I have a friend here with me today. His name is Andrew. Welcome, hey. Andrew, to the podcast. Happy you are, yeah, you are one of my best friends, my dear friend, Evelyn's boyfriend. And mm -hmm. I'm just so excited that you two are together because... You just make my heart so happy and you and Evelyn are such like a perfect couple for each other and getting to know you for the past what five years now four four years four yeah, yeah. it's been really really cool and I'm excited to kind of have this one-on-one -on -one with you because we haven't really had this type of conversation before and getting to know you more is really exciting for me and yeah I'm just excited to have you on the podcast and a little bit of background to my friends here. Andrew is a musician. You're a bass player, right? Mm -hmm. And you played for different types of bands and yourself and things like that, which is really cool. So I listened to a little bit of your music today and I thought it was really neat. So <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. With this episode, we're going to talk more about, you know, your life, what 30s has been like for you, kind of relationships because you went through some pretty heavy shitty shit and Evelyn <laughs> yeah. was like you have to have Andrew on your podcast because he has such an amazing story you overcame so much and I can't wait to get started but before we do I just have to read off a quick review because we had another review on the podcast which I am so thankful of and if people put in like reviews, I'll read them on episodes because I just like shouting you guys out for shouting me out. So you okay with that, Andrew? Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Alrighty. So this has a five star rating. It's called Hooked on This, which is a subtitle. So thank you for that. That's amazing. The person I don't know, but the title of their name is E T K R W I T. And so they said, first off, I wanted to listen to my childhood friend Lindsay give the details behind her exploration into her dream of dreams. But once I heard her story, I had to listen to others. Keep it up with a five star rating. And just thank you so much. Like that, you are the first person to put a review. And when I saw that, my heart was just so happy. So thank you so much for the review. It was amazing. <laughs> Andrew, we're getting into you. <laughs> and you are now, what, like 33 years old? Is that right? I, I turned 34 in July. Oh my gosh. Like, this is how much I know about you. Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited to get to know you more. Yeah, so we'll change that by the end. Yeah, so you're 34. Mm -hmm. And you met Evelyn four years ago, so right when you turned 30. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, that... That whole year was such a huge turning point in my life. I don't know if you want to just like launch in, into the, that whole thing right away. But yeah, like, let's go like, for it. Like, that's what I want to know. <laughs> so, so in 2017, I was living in San Diego with my, my then wife and we'd been there for a couple of years. I was working full time and she was getting through her master's program and she graduated that spring. And then she'd actually gotten this really awesome opportunity to teach at her school's satellite facility in Georgia, the country in the Middle East, not like the state. So it was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. Like we're gonna, we're gonna travel to the Middle East and like spend some time in this crazy country. And, and like, I'm, I'm going to get to kind of relax for a little bit because like I was the breadwinner for a while and then she was gonna, you know, take care of the money for a bit. So it was like, oh, cool. I gotta just like, you know, kick my feet up for a little bit and work on some like creative projects for a little while. This is going to be great. And so. I quit my job. We moved out of our apartment and threw just like everything into storage and just like really downsized everything to just like a suitcase. And that's what I was going to live out of for the, for the, you know, foreseeable future. And so that summer we were kind of just spending some time with family and just kind of like seeing everybody before we left. And we were there in, in Colorado at one of her family's family reunions. And she comes to me one morning and she says, Hey, this isn't working anymore. I don't want to be married anymore. Like this is, this is it. And it's just like, what? Like I had no idea. We were just about to like start this whole new chapter. I was homeless. I was jobless. Like I didn't know what to do. And so like, I just 
took her car because like I didn't have a car at that point. So I just like took her car and I was like, all right, I guess I'm gone. And so I drove like 13 hours that day to get to like my parents' place in Idaho because like I didn't know where else to go. And that was the longest, most awful drive of my entire life. You're just there 13 hours on freeways, just with nothing but your thoughts, just trying to think like, where did I go wrong? What the hell am I going to do? And like, just my whole world crumbled. 2017 was the worst year of my life. So after, after that day, about a week later, she flew out of the country and it made it really, really hard to even like communicate with things because she was literally on the other side of the planet. So even like getting like a phone call or anything in to just try and like talk through things and figure stuff out was just impossible. I, I was just like completely devastated by the whole thing. Like I, I don't have anywhere to go. I'm just like, I'm, I'm turning, I'm turning 30 in the next little bit. This is how I'm going to start my thirties. Right. With just nothing. I have nothing. I have no money in the bank because we were living in California and it was super expensive trying to get through her through school. I no longer have a job. I didn't even have them on my, my all my stuff. Cause it's still at a storage unit in California. Like pff, what the, like 30 sucks. This is going to be the worst thing ever. Like, how do you recover from this? This is awful. So I was able to get a job. It took, it took me like six months from the time that I like actually interviewed and then started. So the following like February, I think I'd, I'd moved down to, to Draper and I just found the, the cheapest, dumpiest little like studio apartment that I could find. We could use my, my last little bit of money to just like put the deposit down and said like, all right, well, I hope this job like brings me enough money that I can pay the rent ne next month and we'll, we'll see how that goes. And I just kind of had to like build back up in, in a town where I knew nobody and had nothing to my name. It was like, I was literally sleeping on the floor in this apartment. I didn't even have a bed because I just had like a suitcase with, with some clothes in it. And that's all I had for a while. But then, you know, that 2018 ended up just being the like biggest upswing in my entire life. Like that's the year that I turned 30. And even though that I, I started that year with nothing at all, like that's the year that I met Evelyn. We met on Bumble of all places. <laughs> so dating apps are awful. They don't work for hardly anyone, but miraculously they worked for, I, I met some really great friends that I'm, I'm playing in a band with now. That job ended up being like the most money I'd ever made in my entire life. And so I just went from like, you know, living at the edge the entire time to like actually having enough money. I moved out of that crappy apartment, got into a better place and just like 2018, like my, my 30th year on, on earth ended up being just like the best year of my life, even though I started it with absolutely nothing. Like it was just like the, remember the Titans comeback story that you kind of, kind of dream about. <laughs> that is wild though. Like you literally went from nothing. You were homeless. You were fresh out of a new marriage you're divorced like mm -hmm. your life literally flipped it upside down and you're like what the fuck and you persevered you kept going you you did what you had to do and the thing that's really amazing to me is that you said 30 was the best year of your life because that's where things flipped around for you what mm -hmm. what did you do to have that transformation so quickly did was it a change of mindset was it like you just got to do what you had to do. Like what, what made you realize, okay, I'm going to make this the best year yet. Like what was that initial spark that you had? Well, I, th I think the turning point, cause, cause that time between, you know, being told at that family reunion that like, Hey, this marriage is done. It's over. I don't want to do this anymore. Like those couple of months between that. And then when I officially like signed the papers, like that was just a period of just me moping and feeling sorry for myself and just not being sure what to do. Like I literally did nothing for those couple of months. I was just so like, I was, I was just sleeping a lot to just try and like not live life and like just kind of drowning myself in just distractions, just useless fluff that wasn't doing anything. But then when I finally like signed the, the papers that she, that my, my ex sent me and just like, all right, this is done. It's over. It was that, that was such a, like a, a defining moment. Like I can almost remember the day that I like actually put pen to paper and it was like, okay, it's done. I'm unhitched from all of this weight now and I can do 
anything. And it was at this moment that I kind of felt like this sort of freedom in a way. Like it still took me a little while like to like mentally like overcome come things, but like that was the moment where I was able to just like let everything go and just be like, okay, we can go forward now. We can we can make this work because now I am completely independent. The only person that I have to work on right now is me. And the only person I have to care about right now is me. And like, no matter where you're at in life, you you have to like take care of yourself first. I, I feel like some people have a hard time, like not, you don't, you don't want to like not care about other people, but you can't help anyone else in, unless like you're in a good spot. Like the airplane thing where it's like, put your own oxygen mask on first before you help other people. Like you can't help anyone if you're not doing okay and so that that moment where i'm like okay sign divorce papers i'm done i'm a i'm a i'm a free man now like i'm just here for myself like it's like okay so now i can focus on doing the things that are going to like make me like feel okay in this world and so i, I remember that first summer like i i really tried hard to like put myself out there and like do all the things that that i felt like i had been neglecting a lot so I ended up doing a lot of hiking. I went hiking every weekend. Like I made a point of that. And because Utah is just so full of incredible outdoor spots, I was just doing a new hike every single weekend. And so I was actually in like pretty good shape that, that summer. I was like feeling physically really good about myself. I was trying to just go out and, and like do events and like spend time, like just trying to like be where people were and and like, I immediately was just like, okay, I want to do music and like, nothing is going to like come between me and music anymore because I don't, I, I, it's just me and I can do whatever I want. I don't even have like friends to keep up with at this point. So like, I, I joined a couple bands that, that summer and only one of them ended up being like a, a good, good situation for me. But it was just like this, this process of just like putting myself in positions where I wasn't just distracting myself. I was, I was trying to put myself into all of those activities that I just felt like I didn't have time for or didn't have energy for before. So like tons and tons of hiking, lots and lots of music. I So I was playing music every day, hiking every weekend. And like that ended up being like such a huge step in personal growth for me. Like just focusing on, on me and making myself happy that way was, was absolutely huge for me. Cause I remember I, I did go on a lot of first dates that summer and most of them were really, really bad. And a lot of those were, were my fault because it was like, I, I was almost like trying to like get back into it too soon a little bit, just like that, that, that spring into the summer. It was just like, ah, I'm still a little, little raw from this, but it wasn't like trying to like find a relationship. It was just like, just trying to meet anybody and like be interested in other people and, and figure things out. I don't know, I'm just kind of rambling at this point. You need to stop me. <laughs> no, no, it's great because it's your life. And it's what I want to know. Like, how did you go from this point A to point B? And it's so interesting to see that you worked on yourself. And that's how you were able to overcome a lot of the hard stuff, which I'm kind of finding in with myself as well. Like, looking into yourself, doing the things you love to do, you find who you really are and you start to become happier again. Things start to look up again. You start saying yes to things again, and you just start doing things out of your comfort zone for growth. And I feel like that year of transition in your life was growth for you. And now look at you, you're with Evelyn, you have a beautiful apartment, you're in bands. Another thing too is you're a YouTuber with 10,000 subscribers, right? Like, yeah. that's a lot of growth right there. Like, that's insane. Like, you did so much, and you're still doing a lot, and you're happier than ever. Like, oh, that's just yeah. incredible. <laughs> yeah, my, my 30s have been awesome, quite frankly. And and I, yeah, it's not to say that everything has been, you know, just like roses and champagne or anything, but like, I... I, I I feel great. Like I'm, I'm right where I need to be. And something, something I was just talking about with my, my guitar player friend just last night at a gig was like, it's hard to regret anything at this point because any like little, little moment that you've gone through is like, cause like 
if you had asked me a couple of years ago, like, do you, do you regret getting married? I would have said, oh yeah, hundred percent. Like I was too young. I was too stupid. We were not very compatible. Like the divorce was frankly like the best thing that, that happened for us because uh, we, we just, we were just not meant to, to be together long-term for sure. But to, to regret that is to put myself in a completely different position now. And I like where I ended up. So if I could go back in time, I don't know that I would change anything, even though it was incredibly painful, that it was really, really hard, that it put me at the lowest lows that, that a person can, can experience. Like I, I wouldn't want to do it again, but I don't know that I would change anything because I like where I ended up. That is such a good viewpoint of things. Okay. Talking about regret. So you don't regret what happened in your life because it made you who you are today. If you did regret it, it's kind of like you are living in the past and you can't move forward. Right. So yeah. that is really important because I used to be in that mindset where it's like, oh, I wish I didn't do this. Like, I wish I wasn't in that relationship too long. I wish I would have looked at things a little bit differently in, you know, this relationship or that relationship. Like, why did I do all this shit that wasn't good for me? Right. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm 30 and been going through all of this, this life changing events, going through therapy, going, working out, doing the things now is making me look back on my life and being like, I don't regret anything because I am being me now looking back at things. It's like, they're all lessons, you know, it's lessons that you had to learn to be where you are and to have the best life possible. And that's kind of what you went through. You went through this huge, crazy lesson. And now, like I said before, you're like in your best life yet, you know, you're in your best years yet. Mm -hmm. and I'm just so blown away by the perseverance you had by just kept going by starting from the zero to success like it's just like I had so many questions in the beginning but now I'm like I'm very proud of you like I don't know what to say you're just <laughs> your story is so inspiring and thank you it's just now that I get to know a little bit more about who you are, like, I see why Evelyn is with you because you are so strong and you are so powerful that it's like, yeah, you two are a power couple because both of you have been through so much and at such different parts of your life that you know who you are deep down and you know what you like and what you don't like and you two just work super well together. So I, I see that getting to know you a bit more. You know, and, and that's a kind of a funny thing too, is, is like Evelyn and I have talked about like, I don't know, the people we were before or, or whatever. And it's like, if we had met each other at, at a different point in our lives, it just would not have worked because, because like the, the spot that she was in, even just like the, you know, the couple of years before we met versus where I was at, like, I don't, I really don't think it, it would have worked. It was we both had to become the people we are now for us to to have come together and 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 found this camaraderie and compatibility that that we enjoy now it's like if we'd met each other in high school i i think we would have absolutely hated each other frankly <laughs> it's like those it's like that tiktok meme where it's like would we have dated in high school and then you show like a photo of like the other person and you and you're like no, we probably wouldn't have because so like you live such completely different lives and you had to go through all that stuff to figure out what you wanted, what you didn't want. Like you were talking about, like you, you probably wouldn't be compatible then because you weren't in that right mindset of finding your partner yeah, and finding the person for you. Oh yeah, totally. And I, and I think that, that compatibility, like if you're in, if you're the sort of person who, who's like trying to do to do the dating thing right now and you go on dates and you find that like ah oh, we're we're just not like we're just not right for each other it's like maybe maybe it's not necessarily like a, a like a personality thing maybe it is just a timing thing like i and i think yeah. that, that that's just another wrinkle in the whole old dating game is that 
you just you just have to get incredibly lucky sometimes. And you guys did. We did. Very, <laughs> yeah. very fortunate. Yeah, and you have a dog and a beautiful place, and <laughs> it just makes me so happy seeing Evelyn super happy and you like it's just I'm I'm so like blown away by the fact that you were married, you had everything, you thought you're gonna move, and then you end up homeless. Like that's just wild to see you go from like nothing to look at you now. Like it's just I'm trying to think of questions and things to ask you, but again. I'm just so blown away by who you are. Like, you're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> For real, though. I mean, like, you're, you're always becoming, right? Like, yeah. th this, this is not a final destination. That, that doesn't exist until you're dead, I think. Like, and I, I kind of feel like maybe just as, may, and maybe it's just like a health thing. Like, 30 kind of used to be like, the, the spot in your life where you kind of started to wind down a bit, right? Like people were always like afraid of their thirties. What was that? Like, it's the, the movie that your podcast title is based on the Jennifer Garner movie. A 13 going on 30, 13 going on 30. Cause yeah. like, for, for a lot of people, when, when you're young, 30 seems just like, that's the end, right? Like that's the point yeah. where you should have things figured out. That's where you have your like family established. That's where you've bought a house, like all of this stuff. Like you're supposed to have your life figured out at that point. And, this, and the, the truth and the secret here is that absolutely no one has any idea what they're doing. It doesn't matter how old or young they are. Everybody is just faking the shit out of everything. Every single yeah. day is just improvising your life. There is no order. <laughs> there is so much chaos that happens. And you just have to, to be in a position to, to deal with the random bullshit that comes your way. And the more that you can just be like, okay, this is just the reality how do I deal with it? The better off you'll be. Because if you get bogged down into like, oh, why is this happening to me? I don't deserve this. This is too hard. Th then you certainly will fail. But if you just have like, you just kind of, that's what the best way out is through, I guess is the, yeah. the, short, the short answer there. So kind of going on that theme of going through, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Like, where do you see yourself with like your life? and your career and things like that like what what do you feel like that next five years is going to be like for you i have no idea <laughs> I, I i i've i feel like i've gotten the question in like you know job interviews and i know i'm like i don't know i hope i'm happy then i guess this is like, different though this isn't a job <laughs> interview this is your life <laughs> i i honestly don't plan that far ahead like especially lately like this summer has been just absolutely nuts for me just it's just been stupid busy like i work kind of long hours at my job right now and and then like all of the a lot of the weddings that got postponed by covid have been happening this year and so my band is like busier than ever i think i've played like eight or nine weddings in the last six weeks like it's just been nuts i'm like not even home that often i'm like hoping like today is like like the dust settling and like the rest of the year goes like a lot chiller but it has been a crazy year and so the whole the whole year i've not been thinking more than like a week ahead because i just i just can't afford to get like too caught up in the future or anything but like i hope at some point i can buy a house that's you know the dream that is quickly going away for a lot of us millennials like yeah the economics of everything are really really tough right now and even though like I have, you know, the, the grown up job and everything, it just, it just always seems just out of reach. And so maybe that's kind of a big part of what's like discouraging for me, like thinking too far ahead. Cause like, I just don't know what opportunities will exist for me and I don't know what challenges will be there. And so it's like trying to see yourself five years from now is more like wishful thinking. And I like to try and just stay grounded and like, okay, what can I do? right now to just make like the next week work right and and i know that that is like really short-sighted right now just because i've been so behind on everything oh my god you mentioned the youtube <laughs> channel i i'm so behind on everything oh my god yeah. i have like six different like products that that i've i've got like got to make videos for and i've not done anything with them just because i haven't had time so yeah i can't i can't get too caught up in the future because i gotta worry about i gotta worry about now <laughs> <laughs> that's good though and the future will come if you live in the what's that saying if you live in the present 
the future is like already there or something like that. Isn't that a saying? I don't know. It probably is. I don't know, but, but sorry, just got a notification that go away. But no, I, I agree with you. Like, it's kind of hard to see into the future, like where you want to be. It's kind of fun to think about it, but at the same time, it's a little overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And especially with all this stuff, like you said, you have going on right now that you have to focus on to get things done. And yeah, so I totally, totally get that. So then my next question for you, and I guess my last question too, because like you just said so many amazing things that <laughs> just mind blow. My last question for you is what advice would you give yourself about being 30 that you wish you had? Hmm. I would say don't stop being cool. I, f I feel like a lot of people get caught up in, in like the, the number that they are or like like the way that other people are at 30 or whatever. And the thing is, is you don't have to get boring as you get old. And if there's stuff that you feel like you should have done when you were younger, you can usually just do that stuff when you're older too, right? It's like, I, I, I remember thinking like, like that I had to like settle down or, or like be a certain kind of way or something. But like, no, I, I can do whatever I want. I can, I can go pierce my ears and grow my hair out and be in a band. And it doesn't matter how old I am. Like, if I think I'm, I'm cool, then like, that's all that really matters. Like, you don't, you don't have to be anything. You can be anything you choose. And it doesn't matter how old or young you are when you make those decisions. And you can always change it. There, you don't have to stay the same at all. Like, if you, you know, start to, to not like what, what you're doing, do something else. You can reinvent yourself any at any point along the way. It it does not matter. You're like age literally is just a number in most situations. <laughs> yeah. Very just, true. Yeah. Just do the things that you you've always wanted. To whatever age you are, just go for it. I love that you say that because I just did an interview with Jeff, which is the previous episode. So if you're listening to this now. You should listen to that one too, because he talks, or sorry, they, so Jeff talks about how saying yes to things and being true to yourself could be the best year of your life. And what you said right there just kind of paralleled with what they said, because it's like, you know, they're right and you're right, that being able to say yes to things and being able to be true to yourself and be cool to like what you like and what you want to do, you'll find that you can have all of the things you want and desire as long as you like yourself and then have fun and stay cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. Thank you so much for that and for your wisdom and your story. This was more like a story time episode. So I, <laughs> a, lot of me, just... a lot of me rambling for sure. Have fun. Editing no. this. I... <laughs> Like I said, like, I love hearing people's stories and hearing, like, Evelyn just kept talking about you and your stories. Like, she's like, you need to have him on. He's really great. Like, his story is amazing. And she's right. Like, your story is awesome. And I just, yeah, I'm just blown away by you and just so cool. So thank you so much for sharing. Like, it, it meant a lot to me. Of course. My pleasure. If it helps <laughs> even just somebody get through their day just entertain somebody for a little bit then and then i've done a good job well thank you so much for being on andrew thank you so much hey friends thank you for listening to today's episode please take a moment to follow and review this podcast so it could reach others also if you leave a review i'll be sharing your review in the next episode lastly if you want to be part of this growing podcast chat about your life your profession passions or if you have advice that you wish you had at 30, please sign up at the link provided in the show notes. I would love to have you as a guest on the show. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you have a wonderful day.